I mean, you could all watch me die and then not do anything and forsake me. Then Jesus would be angry. The laughing Buddha would not be laughing. <laughs> Peace out, humans. It's the Jesus laughing Buddha, <laughs> alias Rich. Um, yeah, I'm not anyone. I'm, um, I'm an important person. The government are literally watching me die. Um, and they do this by attacks on my prosperity systemically. And let's take the bastards to court. In actual fact, I'm not a part of this government. It doesn't, um, it doesn't acknowledge me. And the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet has rejected all of my freedom of information, apart from thousands of matches and I'm a nationally human rights awarded celebrated author. But so anyway, that aside, um, let's hold them to account, shall we? I need the public's help and um, I need your support. And if we could all be a little bit Jesus about it and have a laugh at the same time, um, let's just um, not worry in, um, in grabbing onto um, wealth or prosperity. And like me, I'm w with this detriment that's coming to me, I'm going to um, give it to marginalised people. I don't need much. Um, let's all be a bit Jesus and have a laugh. This is my story. Thank you. Hang on. Hang on a minute. People owe me money. Hang on, I've got a TPD case with extra units of cover. That's like 83 grand times five plus um, interest from 2007. That's like nearly a million dollars. Hang on a minute. There was an impairment um, claim at work cover. And that's um, still hanging open. Just hanging there. <laughs> Hang on. You can't literally kill yourself in a hospital and have it deemed as fatal and not have a conciliation with the hospital, can you? Unless you're framed. My former partner owes me half a million dollars. He keeps locking me up in the side board. How rude. Hang on. I had insurance for when I got ill from work. They owe me 75 grand and Sheena Jack's a um, fraud, fraudulent person. That's not very nice. Hang on a minute. I've spoken in Parliament to Dubbo, to Montreal, to the Today Show, to Today Tonight, to all the radio and TV stations, radio, ABC National, all that kind of stuff. The Prime Minister knows who I am. That's a bit rude, saying I have thousands of matches and then not even giving me the freedom of information. It's almost like I'm being oppressed and persecuted and gaslighted by the Australian government. Hang on, if I was on work cover and I'm a fucked unit, that means a TPD payment of God knows how much. Like a million dollars? I don't know. Why is it still hanging out and just lethally being there in Africa and, and all those places? I don't know. Hang on. If I had a financial complaint, I'd go to Africa. But they banned me. Why did Africa ban me? Because I accused them of being in a conspiracy. And they accused me of being conspiratorial. <laughs> Hang on a minute, that's detriment. The Australian Human Rights Commission free kicked a, a, over a million dollar super settlement to the opposition. That's not very impartial. That's called detriment. And that's what happens um, when you get framed. You don't win anything. But um, it's how um, we're going to acknowledge the federal government. Because we want the detriment. And then we're going to give it to charity. Hang on a minute. The Attorney General and Bill Shorten absolutely know who I am. And they can easily acknowledge for the SRC Act, I'm an employee of um, um, the government. I've even got a Department of Social Security um, ID number. This is preposterous. Gee, it's almost like they're trying to rob me of money. A vulnerable person who's already overdosed once and literally suicided from oppression another time. Gee, it's like they're trying to forsake me and kill me, isn't it? Even after I was killed. It wasn't me who killed myself. It was um, systemic government oppression. That's what it was. Rendering me a vagrant and persecuting me in a mental health facility. And now um, it's been 18 months and I well know that every single person blames me for being unwell and doesn't blame a systemic government oppression underpinned by key political players and kingpins. And for that, the world's forsaken me. However, there's hope. <laughs> oh, hey, yeah, yeah, hey, Mark, hey, you remember me? Oh, no, perhaps not. I don't have to promise to give it away, but I am going to give it away. I just want to be safe and have a human monkey experience. 
Um, and I'm going to die anyway. Then you know that's all right. Um, so um, look, um, I'm owed the money. There's no two ways about it. And because I'm framed and by elaborate um, conspiracies such as Mr. Ball, the, the lawyer who um, sits on Australian government policy and informs the ombudsman, it's no wonder I haven't had any success fighting all my justice issues. <sighs> so 18 months after I officially have a fatal injury from systemic oppression underpinned by key political figures in Australian society and no one has my back, I'm left to... Um, really rot um it they put me on job seeker and then i begged for a pension and then um i got put on the pension and then um that's fourteen hundred dollars a week and my rent's sixteen hundred dollars a week so the government with a human rights awarded autobiographer artist and formerly nationally celebrated speaker is consciously maliciously exploiting me and aiding and abetting my death by attacking me via proxy in the finances to render me vulnerable, helpless, and with no voice. But I have a voice, and I matter. And this is why this matters. Victimisation is illegal. A government conspiracy to pervert the course of justice is highly, highly inequitable. I can easily prove that via my prosecution would only have to prove that three or more people, by acting of omission, acted to pervert the course of justice. There is systemic, massive amounts of justice injustice happening here, and it's easily provable, and it's um, it's systemic from the coffee guy to the office of prime minister and cabinet. So um, um, you've all forsaken me. That's fine. Um, look, I'm gonna um give it all back to people, and um, I guess I'm a little bit um, earth monkey and a little bit um, a little bit a little bit Jesus but loving blood. And this is um, formerly Dr. Rich McLean, and um. This is a bit of a story. Okay, cheers. Hey, I'm famous and homeless and the Prime Minister won't listen to me. That's a weird thing to say, isn't it? Apparently you knew my story. The office of, I'm a famous person, um, a, a public speaker of 20 years, um, advocating for people um, with less privilege than myself and less privilege than most. Um, the office of Prime Minister and Cabinet at the moment won't validate my thousand strong match um, in my freedom of information. They rejected it. Here's why that matters and how it goes backwards from that. Um, I have been the victim of a violence of neglect. I sit here today, I've got a big heart and I'm, I'm sentient and I've got a big heart and I still want to give this back to the community. Um, now, what's happened is I've lost many, many millions of dollars in detriment. That is due to being categorically uh, character assassinated to the point that it killed me. That's not a good part of the story, but the good part is that I'm here and um, and I'm still conscious and alive and, um, and I still want to give this back. Um, now, as a human rights awarded advocate and author and doctor of philosophy and someone who ran my own business with very marginalized people for two years, I became unwell from work. Um, due to uh, my own sexual abuse case in which um, I was the victim and um, and further um, uh, I was treating a person who had a, a, a sexual abuse case so the vocat cases were cooked and I was in a violent affray in which I saved someone and um, and the police pinned it on me. Um, underpinning this uh, was uh, my, Ill, my uh, some time off work then and I had some time off work my income protection didn't pay and why? It's systemically cooked from the top, and I'll tell you why. My former partner is an ASIO agent. He has half a million dollars that he owes me right this second. Why can't I get that acknowledgement? Every time I've tried to get that from him, I end up in the psych ward. That's because I'm easily exploitable as someone with a mental illness, gay, have used drugs in the past, whatever, who hasn't, and um, am character assassinated. It buys into already existing prejudices that are present in my family, in friends, and um, it identifies me as unwell. What's unwell is a sick society, um, and it's underpinned by powerful people. One of those powerful people, and a very cowardly person, is my former partner, Steve Isonides. Every time I try and get an atonement for our relationship together, in which he exploited me financially and sexually, I end up in the clink, in the psych ward. 
this systemic abuse was so gutless and via proxy that I lost my income assist. I lost Australian Financial Complaints Authority. Um, they delayed, deferred, denied all of my financial cases up to a year and a half when they should have done it within four weeks. That's against their principles. And then I um, told them I was gonna call them on whistleblowing and um, they banned me. So every financial complaint I have now, I can't do anything. The Australian Human Rights Commission free kicked a million dollar deal in which I was exploited um, by a super company to the opposition. That's not very impartial, is it? Um, and on and on it goes. The AAT, work cover, former partner issues, insurance, a TPD claim for 2008, TPD claim for 2007. It's, um, it's, it's an unholy amount of systemic and utter abuse and neglect of one particular person and that's me, Dr. Richard McLean, and I'm just trying to find my way back from it. I've finally, after 10 years of not having one, found myself a lawyer, but I don't know how articulated that is to set up to fail, because I've been set up to fail again and again and again. I actually had a complaint about a, a, a GP valid complaint. His lawyer informed the um, government ombudsman and sat on the legal bar of Australia. So every person I spoke to, or every agency, in the right way of going about a complaint was absolutely and utterly cooked, framed, and set up to fail. That systemic abuse, that neglect, oh hello, this is Crystal, this is Crystal, my dog, and we're just sitting in the park. We've got not a scent, but sentience. You can't stop us from speaking. And um, I just wanna say that um, as I was set up to fail for so long, it's rendered me, um, so bereft of hope in the human race that I actually attempted suicide within a psychiatric unit in February 2021. It was deemed a fatal injury and a lethal attempt in the Freedom of Information documents. Still, the hospital, where of mercy, are not very merciful. Um, I can't get a lawyer, I can't sue for the detriment, I can't feel my feet, and now I have a uh, a brain injury from losing all my blood. Um, it's a sad story, that part, but um, the good part is that I'm alive and conscious and absolutely and utterly aware of the systemic, gutless scapegoating that comes from government agencies and systemic abuse and financial abuse. As a registered NDIS provider and therapist, I'm obliged to report this to the NDIA and the NDIS Commission. I've done so, and they will not acknowledge me. I've, um, I'm watching over my shoulder. Seriously don't know if someone's gonna blow my head off. Um, look, um, it's an abhorrent amount of abuse and neglect, and the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet um, have acknowledged, um, as a former nationally celebrated speaker who's spoken in Montreal, to Parliament House, to keynote presentations in Melbourne and Sydney, to Dubbo and Warrnambool, all over hundreds of speeches, hundreds of talks, that um, uh, I might even send this to a few of you actually, um, have, um, have would, would have a national profile. And they told me, so that I had many thousands of matches. And then they got back to me and said, you don't exist. And that's exactly what they want. I'd like for you today, you know, to consider me existing amongst this systemic, and vile oppression that's again identifying identifying me as ill when in actual fact it's systemic it's via proxy and it's by government agencies and seriously powerful people underpinning this absolute corruption i'm queer i drink a beer if i had one and i'm bereft of any finance i've um i'm living in poverty and 18 months after I survived that lethal attempt, being filled up with someone else's blood. I was unceremoniously dumped from the hospital and 18 months later, I've been fighting for my rights. Today, I sit here with the dog, peacefully in the park. I'm hungry. I've got no avenue for complaint and every single person in my life, friend, family, others, Crystal, um, are willing to exploit me as um, someone who's absolutely crazy However, they don't understand or can acknowledge, or even worse, they do, 
this systemic and atrocious, malicious and vile, gutless violence of neglect, which may actually kill me. The, 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 the quick part of that is get his money and then get his reputation and then get everything he stands for. I've been exploited so utterly and thoroughly this crystal, um, with my reputation. I want to give this back to the community. I want to survive and I want to thrive, but I'm going to need the public's help. I want to take this to the High Court of Australia. But they're going to try and kill me in the meantime. And you know what? All my friends are going to buy into it that it should be me looking out for welfare. It should be me going for the food packages. It should be me look, um, you know, rationing my DSP. And I just got to say that's $1,400 a month and my rent alone is $1,600 a month. That's 18 months that the government's witnessed a very well-known public advocate and human rights award-winning author and autobiographer exploited for being bravely vulnerable in a book that I published 20 years ago. They've watched me burn. And with your support, just even if it's $20 or whatever, that you can, they can help get me through. Um, I want to um, get an advocate. If you can help me, I want legal help. If you can have a cup of tea, if you can be that person who says, we know about the systemic abuse and neglect. We know that you're a sentience. We know that you have agency, thought, compassion, and that you're going to give this millions of dollars of detriment back to the marginalised people that need it as I've always done in my 20 year career of advocacy. So please um, consider investing, and I say invest, or even share this to a lawyer you know, to, a, um, to someone high up in politics, to any single police officer who is within the Charter of Human Rights of people with a disability, of which I now identify, for um, not acting outside that Charter of Human Rights. It is upon every public official not to ignore this video. I might even send it to all parliamentarians because I've already emailed the Attorney General, Mark Dreyfus, who I've got photos with, and told him about this injustice, and it's just going around in circles. I did it to him in opposition, and now I'm doing it um, in, in this government. And again, to Bill Shorten, where my, again, my NDIA arts therapist role, um, the work covers still to come. So um, please help me if you can. Um, sharing this helps. Um, contacting me helps, um, getting me in touch with a lawyer, uh, that helps. Donating and investing, and I say investing because I'm going to win this, but I'm going to need everyone's help to get there. And I don't need to be exploited anymore by um, mental health institutions that now government sanctioned medication me, which is why I've got to drop lip and talk funny, um, to be medicated for, guess what? delusions of persecution and that is how the violence of neglect and a corrupt mental health system abuses someone with malicious victimization and vile neglect and identifies them with illness when in fact it is the system that is ill and I have sentience I'm amazing We'll get there. If you can help, help. If you can't, don't hurt me anymore. Thanks for listening. As an artist, I always thought my art was prophetic and that obviously puts me at the center of something, um, <laughs> I don't know, conspiratorially or uh, as, a, as a, what is it? What's it called? Uh, I've got the word here. It's a panopicon. Oh, yeah, that's what drugs do to people. They make them think they're the center of the universe. <laughs>
Enjoy the earth. Enjoy your life. Have a bong. Have a smoke. Have a wait. Have a dog. Have babies. Do whatever the fuck you want. Just don't hurt anyone. And if you do, you ultimately forget it.